This tutorial will cover the creation of barcodes and 2D codes. It's very simple. To create a barcode, we simply come over to our object toolbar, creation toolbar, and I'm going to pick this object that looks like a small QR code. That is our barcode creation tool. I'm going to click that once. Now that selected, you can see I have a cursor with a representative barcode next to that. I'm simply going to click anywhere in open space and it will create my barcode. Now, this barcode is not filled, so it's just an outline. It's a little bit hard to understand, so I'm going to zoom in on this, reselect it. It's going to scroll over a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this in. Now, I'm going to fill this because it's going to be easier to see. However, this tutorial does not cover fill. We have another tutorial for fill and that you'll want to watch to understand the fill properties. I'm going to go ahead and fill that and now you can see the barcode is solid. We have several different options for barcodes and 2D codes. You can see to change the type of code that you're utilizing, you simply come over here, you're going to click the drop down and you can see all of the different codes that are available. We also have data matrix, QR codes, which will show you UPCs, code 128, multiple subsets, so on and so forth. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and come out of that for now. I'm going to change my text here to just a simple number and apply that and now you can see the barcode did change. Let's look at creating a 2D code. I'm just simply going to come to data matrix, click that, click apply, and now you can see the system has created a two-dimensional barcode. Now, how do we manipulate the aspects of these codes? To do that, we're going to simply click on this barcode icon over here to the left when our barcode is selected. So when I do that, you can see I now get a pop-up box here. That pop-up box is going to allow us further control over the two-dimensional code. For example, we can change what the text is directly in here. So if we want to add an additional digit or two, we can do that. We can make a reverse barcode, which we'll show you in a moment, and we can change the mode. We can also change the size of the code. For example, a 10 by 10 would be 10 cells up and 10 cells uh, across and so on and so forth. Or if we do smallest, it will make the smallest size available that allows the data to fit inside the code and be encoded into the code. You can see we've got lots of different types here. We've got rectangular shaped barcodes, which I'll show you depending on your geometry of your part or the area which you're trying to uh, fit the two-dimensional code. We'll just go back to a standard. Let's do a 16 by 16. Now you can see the representation of 16 cells by 16 cells. We can also do a reverse barcode. This is if you are trying to mark a barcode on a material that is already dark. Typically the 2D code is uh, dark in contrast and if you're marking on a dark surface, well you can't put dark on dark. So what you want to do is create the area uh, that is supposed to be white. So for example, if you're marking a black piece of anodized aluminum, you would want to create the white area on that black anodized aluminum as opposed to the black area because the black area already exists by nature uh, due to the fact that the anodized aluminum is black. The same goes for some black plastics where you'll get a white mark where you may want to create that uh, other color. Now, you can also create barcodes in white, and most high-end readers will read those as well. So you do have both options. If I were to check a uh, reverse here, and then this is my what we call quiet zone, which is the buffer area around that, because remember, if I'm creating the white space, if you imagine that code were printed on a piece of paper, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. If this code were created on a piece of paper, this black area would represent the white and the white would actually represent the black. So we want to make a clean area around that so that this white area that's left over, the black area, for example our anodized, uh, black anodized aluminum plate, would have a buffer area around it so the 2D code reader could pick this code up and understand that it's there. Now you do have some other options in here as well. Uh, I'll show you if you want to place text below your barcode, so you have man readable text below your barcode or two dimensional code, you can do that and that prevents you from having to create a separate text box within your marking file. 
So I'll show you that. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the reverse here. I'm going to click this show text. I've got some text height and width which allows you to fit that text into an exact size. And I can also uh, enter some text spacing. So when I click OK, now you see a representative below there of that man readable text. I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off for now. I'm going to show you a couple other things. You can go to a different type of mode depending on what you're marking, the speed that you're trying to acquire, and the type of code that you're marking. And for example, in this two dimensional code, we can do what's called circle mode, which is actually going to create circles or dots instead of squares. This is helpful for specific applications where you need speed or you're marking on the fly or your part's going by and you don't have time to mark the full squares because your part is moving. This can also be read if you have the right scanner. Uh, we can also do a point mode, excuse me, point mode. We can also, we can also do a point mode, which you can see here is strictly points. So a lot of tools. You can enable a tilde, which is good for GS1 and other types of special encodation that uh, may be required. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and unclick this and go back to our normal code. I want to show you additionally that you can create QR codes as well. There's my QR code representative, and likewise you have multiple settings in here to create this code. Last code I'd like to show you is a 128 subset A. I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And now you can see I have a code 128. Likewise, I can manipulate this code as well. You can see I can add the text below it. It gives me an example of what type of data can go in there. And I can do multiple things. For example, the same reverse. I can change the height and the width. And I can do the quiet zone as well and manipulate the scaling of the bar size relative to the spacing between them. Now, I'm not going to get into this in detail. This is covered in the operation manual for the software. However, if you have an issue where you're trying to create a linear barcode on something and you don't have a lot of space, sometimes it helps to manipulate the scale of the black to white bars in order to obtain the resolution that you need to still be able to scan that when you're trying to fit the code into a small area. So that's a general overview of how to create barcodes, 2D codes, and QR codes and more.